My next question is, who is Ian Clifford? How come we've never heard of him? Where did he come from? Uh, building a car from scratch is no small thing. And uh, building one with an entirely new powertrain is the kind of work you would expect from the world's major American, Japanese, German automotive giants. Whereas Zen Motors is a small Toronto startup. And its cute first effort is parked just outside the theater. If you haven't seen it, go have a look. The Zen car. And what I hear from Ian Clifford, who I'm inviting up here on stage, is that they've just signed a deal which will create a second iteration that will represent a major, major leap forward. Ian Clifford. Thank you, Moses. I got interested in electric cars about seven years ago um, when smog days were on the rise in the city. Uh, I thought the way that we were traveling through our cities were insane. Car sharing didn't exist at the time. And uh, I really felt that um, I had to buy an electric car. The electric cars made so much sense to me. So I went online and searched around and uh, tried to buy one from the OEMs, but of course the major auto manufacturers don't build electric cars. At the time they were building the EV1, General Motors, but the, you've all seen the movie, I hope. They killed that car. Um, but I found this old guy in Connecticut, Jack Greta, a very unassuming person, a pilot, but an electric car aficionado. He'd been driving um, an electric car like this for 35 years, every day. He drove it about 30 miles a day. And he dispelled every myth in my mind that electric cars were not a practical means of transportation. Currently, on our planet, there are between 750 and 900 million passenger vehicles. It's an insane number. So what does that mean? I, you try to put that in context. Uh, the amount of energy that has been invested, the amount of raw materials that have been invested, it takes about 40,000 gallons of fresh water to build a car, not to mention the raw materials that are built into it as well. It's a staggering, staggering number. For more context, in uh, North America, we have roughly one vehicle per man, woman, and child. And I can tell you, my five-year-old is a terrible driver. Why he needs a car, I don't know. But the reality is, by comparison, in India today, there is one car per 17,000 people. But about a month ago, Tata, one of the largest corporations in the world, announced a $2,000 internal combustion vehicle for the Indian market. Very, very frightening stuff. I've put together a little video of our current product. What you're hearing is the wheels on the, uh, on the ground. This is our low-speed urban vehicle. We build them in Montreal, and we ship them all to the United States, not one of them in Canada. Interestingly, uh, British Columbia allows this type of vehicle. And to let you know what it is, it's a, a, it's a vehicle with a top speed of 40 kilometers an hour, and it can travel on a 50-kilometer roadway. So basically, your entire urban core uh, and neighborhood driving. In the United States, they're legal in 43 of the 50 states. And we have, over the last couple of years, you know, knocked on the door at, uh, at Queen's Park and said, hey, you know, hello, we're here, we're a Canadian company, how about looking at us? And, and we've been turned away pretty consistently. So about a month and a half ago, I was at a, uh, at a presentation of a US um, a person talking about the environment. It was a really, really interesting talk. And uh, afterwards, I was invited to a lunch where this person was, and, and I, we were chatting. And um, he asked me, you know, how are car sales going in Canada? You know, you're a great Canadian company, you got this great product. I said, it's not great. He said, why? I said, because of legislative reasons. And um, this person grabbed me by the shoulders. The premier happened to be in the room at the same time, marched me over to the premier and said, Premier McGinty, do your part electric cars in Ontario now, and walked away. So that was Dalton McGinty's inconvenient truth. So you can guess, <laughs> you can guess who the person was. And earlier this week, I had uh, uh, several people from our company had a one-to-one -one meeting with McGinty, the Minister of Transportation, Ministry of Industry. 
And uh, I think there is a uh, very significant chance that in the near future we will be able to um, offer our vehicles for sale in, uh, in Ontario. So that's a, a great breakthrough for us. If every car was electric today, do we have enough electricity to power them? There is an overabundance of energy available on this planet. We just don't have, uh, have a way of capturing it currently. The reason I highlight barium as, a, as an element is the technology I'm going to talk to you about uh, is based on barium. There are approximately 200 million tons of global reserves of barium. Barium used to be used for a lot of different things. Um, it used to line the inside of cathode ray tubes or television sets. But now, um, since everything is virtually going to plasma and, and other technologies, there's a huge abundance of this material. It's very safe to mine, I'm told, uh, and uh, uh, less destructive than, than certainly a lot of the other uh, potential energy sources that are out there. A uh, hundred years ago in New York City, there were more electric cars than there were gasoline cars. There were a lot more horses, I am told, wonderfully, and hopefully horses are going to come back and hopefully electric cars are going to come back as well. We have all this wonderful energy available to us, the sun shining and the wind blowing and, and everything else, and, and now we have the ability to store it. The conversion of existing vehicles from internal combustion to electric. I talk about this huge investment that we all share. I mean, the raw materials, water, and resources that go into these millions and hundreds of millions of cars around the world could be reclaimed by us by taking out internal combustion engines and putting in electric drive kits. The science is there. The technology to create electric cars is, is well, well proven. What's missing is the energy source. We believe, as a company, and now speaking from the company's side, that there's a tremendous, tremendous imperative uh, for electric vehicles and the ability now to store tremendous amounts of energy. Everybody's kind of asked, what would it be like, you know, if all the cars were electric and I could walk outside, and what would the experience be like? So all I ask is you, you just need to go to the hardware store, and any hardware store can do it for you. So just hold on two seconds here. I can't hear a thing. I can't hear a thing. But everything smells great. I don't know if you can hear me <laughs> anymore, but I thank you. And please, Drive electric, because that is the future. Thank you. <laughs>